Hi, and welcome to this audio recording of lines 27 to 330 of Book 1 of Paradise Lost. Say first, the heaven hides nothing from thy view, nor the deep tract of hell. Say first, what cause moved our grandparents in that happy state, favored of heaven so highly to fall off from their creator and transgress his will for one restraint, lords of the world besides, who first seduced them to that foul revolt, the infernal serpent. He it was whose guile stirred up with envy and revenge deceived the mother of mankind, what time his pride had cast him out from heaven with all his host of rebel angels, by whose aid aspiring to set himself in glory above his peers, he trusted to have equaled the Most High if he opposed, and with ambitious aim against the throne and monarchy of God raised impious war in heaven and battle proud with vain attempt. Him, the almighty power, hurled headlong, flaming from the ethereal sky with hideous ruin and combustion down to bottomless perdition, there to dwell in adamantine chains and penal fire who durst defy the omnipotent to arms. Nine times the space that measures day and night to mortal men, he, with his horrid crew, lay, vanquished, rolling in the fiery gulf, confounded though immortal. But his doom reserved him to more wrath, for now the thought both of lost happiness and lasting pain torments him. Round he throws his baleful eyes that witnessed huge affliction and dismay, mixed with obdurate pride and steadfast hate. At once, as far as angels can, he views the dismal situation, waste and wild, a dungeon horrible on all sides round, as one great furnace flamed, yet from those flames no light, but rather darkness visible served only to discover sights of woe, regions of sorrow, doleful shades where peace and rest can never dwell. Hope never comes that comes to all, but torture without end still urges and a fiery deluge fed with ever burning sulfur, unconsumed. Such place eternal justice had prepared for those rebellious. Here their prison ordained in utter darkness, and their portion set as far removed from God and light of heaven as from the center thrice to the utmost pole. Oh, how unlike the place from whence they fell. There, the companions of his fall, o'erwhelmed with floods and whirlwinds of tempestuous fire, he soon discerns, and weltering by his side one next himself in power and next in crime, lying long after known in Palestine and named Beelzebub, to whom the arch enemy and thence in heaven called Satan, with bold words breaking the horrid silence, thus began. If thou beest he, but oh how fallen, how changed from him who in the happy realms of light, clothed with transcendent brightness, didst outshine myriads, though bright. If he whom mutual league united thoughts and counsels, equal hope and hazard in the glorious enterprise, joined with me once, now misery hath joined an equal ruin, into what pit thou seest from what height fallen, so much the stronger proved he with his thunder. Until then, who knew the force of those dire arms? Yet not for those, nor what the potent victor in his rage can else inflict, do I repent or change. Though changed in outward luster, that fixed mind and high disdain from sense of injured merit, that with the mightiest, raised me to contend 
and to the fierce contention brought along innumerable force of spirits armed that durst dislike his reign and me preferring his utmost power with adverse power opposed in dubious battle on the plains of heaven and shook his throne what though the field be lost all is not lost the inconquerable will and study of revenge, immortal hate and courage, never to submit or yield, and what is else not to be overcome? That glory never shall his wrath or might exhort from me to bow and sue for grace with suppliant knee and deify his power, whom from the terror of this arm so late doubted his empire? That were low indeed. That were an ignominy and shame beneath this downfall. Since by fate and strength of gods and this imperial substance cannot fail. Since through experience of this great event, in arms, not worse, in foresight much advanced, we may, with more successful hope, resolve to wage by force or guile eternal war, irreconcilable to our grand foe who now triumphs in the excess of joy, soul reigning, holds the tyranny of heaven. So spake the apostate angel, though in pain, vaunting aloud, but racked with deep despair, and him thus answered soon his bold compeer, Beelzebub. O prince, O chief of many throned powers, that led the embattled seraphim to war under thy conduct, and in the dreadful deeds fearless, endangered heaven's perpetual king, and put to proof his high supremacy, whether upheld by strength or chance or fate. Too well I see and rue the dire events that with sad overthrow and foul defeat hath lost us heaven. And all this mighty host in horrible destruction laid thus low as far as gods and heavenly essences can perish. For the mind and spirit remains invincible and vigor soon returns. Though all our glory extinct and happy state here, swallowed up in endless misery. But what if he, our conqueror, whom I now of force believe almighty, since no less than such could have o'erpowered such force as ours, have left us this, our spirit and strength entire, strongly to suffer, and support our pains, that we may so suffice his vengeful ire, or do him mightier service as his thralls by right of war, whatever his business be. Here, in the heart of hell, to work in fire, or do his errands in the gloomy deep, what, if, what can it then avail, though yet we feel strength undiminished or eternal being, to undergo eternal punishment? Whereto, with speedy words, the arch-fiend Satan replied, Fallen cherub, to be weak is miserable, doing or suffering, but of this be sure, to do aught good will never be our task, but ever to do ill our sole delight, as being the contrary to his high will, whom we resist. If then his providence out of our evil seek to bring forth good, our labor must be to pervert that end and out of good still to find means of evil, which oft times may succeed so as perhaps shall grieve him if I fail not and disturb his inmost counsels from their destined aim. But see, the angry victor hath recalled his ministers of vengeance and pursuit back to the gates of heaven. The sulphurous hail shot after us in storm or blown hath laid the fiery surge that from the precipice of heaven received us falling. And the thunder winged with red lightning and impetuous rage perhaps hath spent his shafts and ceases now to bellow 
through the vast and boundless deep. Let us not slip the occasion, whether scorn or satiate fury yield it from our foe. Seest thou yon dreary plain forlorn and wild, that seat of desolation, void of light, save what the glimmering of these livid flames casts pale and dreadful? Thither let us tend, from off the tossing of these fiery waves, there rest, if any rest can harbor there, and reassembling our afflicted powers, consult how we may henceforth most offend our enemy, our own loss, how repair, how overcome this dire calamity, what reinforcement we may gain from hope, if not what resolution from despair. Thus, Satan, talking to his nearest mate, with head uplift above the wave and eyes that sparkling blazed, his other parts, besides, prone on the flood, lay extended long and large, lay floating many a rood in bulk as huge as whom the fables name of monstrous size, Titanian or earthbound that warred on Jove, Briarios or Typhon, whom the den by ancient Tarsus held, or that sea beast Leviathan, which God of all his works created hugest that swim in the ocean stream, him haply slumbering on the Norway foam, the pilot of some small night foundered skiff, deeming some island oft as seamen tell, with fixed anchor in his scaly rind, moors by his side under the lee, while Night invests the sea and wished morn delays. So, stretched out huge in length, the arch fiend lay chained on the burning lake. Nor ever thence had risen or heaved his head, but that the will and high permission of all ruling heaven left him at large to his own dark designs, that with reiterated crimes he might heap on himself damnation, while he sought evil to others, and enraged, might see how all his malice served but to bring forth infinite goodness, grace, and mercy shown on man by him seduced, but on himself treble confusion, wrath, and vengeance poured. Forthwith upright he rears from off the pool his mighty stature. On each hand, the flames driven backward slope their pointing spires, and rolled in billows, leave in the midst a horrid veil. Then, with expanded wings, he steers his flight aloft, incumbent on the dusky air that felt unusual weight till, on dry land, he lights. If it were dry land that ever burned, with solid as the lake with liquid fire. And such appeared in hue, as when the force of subterranean wind transports a hill torn from Pelorus on the shattered side of thundering Etna, whose combustible and fueled entrails thence conceiving fire sublimed with mineral fury aids the winds and leave a singed bottom all involved with stench and smoke. Such resting found the soul of unblessed feet. Him followed his next mate, both glorying to have escaped the Stygian flood as gods, and by their own recovered strength, not by the sufferance of supernal power. Is this the region? This, the soil, the clime, said the lost archangel. This the seat that we must change for heaven, this mournful gloom for that celestial light. Be it so, since he, who now is sovereign, can dispose and bid what shall be right, farthest from him is best, whom reason hath equaled, force hath made supreme above his equals. Farewell, happy fields, where joy forever dwells. Hail, horrors, hail, infernal world. And thou, profoundest hell, 
Receive thy new possessor, one who brings a mind not to be changed by place or time. The mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. What matter where, if I be still the same, and what I should be, all but less than he whom thunder hath made greater? Here at least we shall be free. The Almighty hath not built here for his envy, will not drive us hence. Here we may reign secure. And in my choice, to reign is worth ambition, though in hell. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. But wherefore let we then our faithful friends, the associates and co-partners of our loss, lie thus astonished on the oblivious pool and call them not to share with us their part in this unhappy mansion, or once more with rallied arms to try what may be yet regained in heaven, or what more be lost in hell. So Satan spake, and him Beelzebub thus answered, Leader of those armies, bright, which but the omnipotent none could have foiled. If once they hear that voice, their liveliest pledge of hope in fears and dangers, heard so oft in worst extremes and on the perilous edge of battle when it raged, it all assaults their surest signal. They will soon resume new courage and revive, though now they lie groveling and prostrate on yon lake of fire. And as we erewhile, astounded and amazed, no wonder fallen in such a pernicious height. He scarce had ceased when the superior fiend was moving toward the shore. His ponderous shield, ethereal temper, massy, large and round, behind him cast. The broad circumference hung on his shoulders like the moon, whose orb through optic glass the Tuscan artist views at evening from the top of Fisole or in Valdarno to descry new lands, rivers or mountains in her spotty globe. His spear, to equal which the tallest pine hewn on Norwegian hills to be the mast of some great admiral were but a wand, he walked with to support uneasy steps over the burning marl not like those steps on heaven's azure. And the torrid climb smote on him sore besides, vaulted with fire. Nevertheless, he so endured till on the beach of that inflamed sea, he stood and called his legions angel forms who lay entranced thick as autumnal leaves that strew the brooks in Valambrosia where the Etrurian shades high overarched in bower or scattered sedge afloat when with fierce winds Orion armed hath vexed the Red Sea coast whose waves o'er through Besiris in his Memphian chivalry while with perfidious hatred they pursued the sojourners of Goshen who beheld from the safe shore their floating carcasses and broken chariot wheels. So thick bestrewn, abject and lost, lay these, covering the flood. Under amazement of their hideous charge, he called so loud that all the hollow deep of hell resounded. Princes, potentates, warriors, the flower of heaven once, uh, once yours, now lost, if such astonishment as this can seize eternal spirits. Or have you chosen this place after the toil of battle to repose your wearied virtue for the ease you find to slumber here as in the vales of heaven? Or in this abject posture have ye sworn to adore the conqueror who now beholds cherub and seraph rolling in the flood with scattered arms and ensigns till anon his swift pursuers from heaven gates Discern the advantage, and descending, tread us down, thus drooping, or with linked thunderbolts, transfix us to the bottom of this gulf. Awake, arise, or be forever fallen. <laughs>